Hello everyone and welcome back. We're going to continue building our color game and in this video we're going to add a little bit more functionality to it. The first thing I'd like to do, if you'll look at our final version, is we have this little thing here. Whenever we click on something it gives us a message whether we're right or we're wrong. Let's find the right one. It gives us a little message right there. So we're going to add this little message bar. So it's underneath the title but above the container. So that's where we're going to put it. It's going to put a div in there for now, and inside of there is going to be a span. The reason I'm doing a span is because this is the message part where we have buttons on either side. So we're going to need to put buttons in there. We want to use a span so that it's not a block level element and push these buttons up and down. So span, and we're going to give this an ID of message. And for now it's going to be empty. It's not going to say anything because we want it because on this, remember on this one when you refresh there's nothing there at first until you click something. So we want it to be empty. So if I refresh this page, you're going to see nothing has changed because, again, none of these have any space to them. So there's no CSS changes needed here, and honestly, we don't even need this purple color anymore because the colors of the um, squares are being set by JavaScript. So you'll notice I took that out and nothing changed. So let's go ahead and get to our JavaScript and start adding some stuff. All right, so let's identify the steps we're going to take in this video, the things we want to accomplish. First, we want to fade out the incorrect div when clicked. Just like in this final one, if you click on the wrong one, let's refresh, it fades away, it goes away. Now we're not actually going to fade it yet, we're just going to um, make it go away instantly, but we'll add that, that little, those little nice touches later. So fade out the incorrect div whenever it's clicked. The second thing we're going to do is going to add the try again or correct message when square is clicked. And that's this right here. So when you click on the wrong one, it says try again. When you click on the right one, it says correct. The third thing we want to accomplish is we want to create a function to set all the squares to the correct color, just like it did right here. After you click the right color, it loops through all of the squares and sets them to that color. And finally, we're going to pick a random color random from the array instead of the first one every time. We're not actually going to get random colors yet, but we're just going to pick one of these six randomly. So let's go ahead and start number one, fade out the incorrect div when clicked. In order to do that, we're going to put that inside of our event listener, because remember anything you want to happen whenever you click needs to be in the event listener. So right now, we're con we don't need this console.log anymore. So right now, if you click the right one, it says you win. If you click the wrong one, it says you suck. So we don't need that anymore. Instead, we need to fade this out. Now, there are a few different ways we could do this. We could hide it, the square. We could set display to none. But probably the best in our situation is going to be just to set the background color equal to the background color of the page. That way, we can add some animations to it. and It'll look nice and pretty, and plus it's super simple. So to each event listener, because remember, this event listener is being added to each square. Each square is getting a different one. So we're going to do this, because that way it's this particular square, and again, this is why we have to use the old school function declaration. This.style.backgroundcolor equals black. Semicolon outside the string. Refresh and see if it works. Boom, 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 perfect. Now that one still says you win, it doesn't change it. So that's exactly what we want. Number one, done. Second, add a try again or correct message when the square is clicked. Over here in our example, that's that thing right here. So if I click the wrong one, it says try again. If I click the right one, it says correct. So over here in color game, we have this span that we created with the ID of message. So let's select that. Const message equals document dot get element by ID message. So now that we have that element, we're going to do something with it. So if you click the right one, message dot text content equals correct. Let's add a little smiley face in there. And if you get the wrong one, message dot text content equals you suck because you still suck. Refresh. Let's click the wrong one. It's oh I didn't. It says you suck, but I didn't. You can't see it because it's black on black. So in the final version, this little bar will be the little div. will have a white background, so let's just go ahead and set that. Um, I have an ID of message container. 
think I may have done that off camera. If you didn't, make sure you set the ID layer of message container. And then we want to do message container and set the background color to paint. Refresh, and you'll notice it's not there because it has no content. But if I click on the wrong thing, now it does. If I click the right one, it says correct. Wrong, 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 correct. That is the second one sorted. Now I want to create a function to set all the squares to the correct color. That happens right here whenever you click the right one, all the squares go to that color. And we'll expand that later to set the background of this header once we get this all set up. So we'll just make a, um, make a function down here at the bottom. Const change colors. We'll just make it an arrow function. Now this function needs to take one argument and it's going to be the correct color. We'll just call it color. And what it's going to do is it's going to loop through each of the squares and change the background color to that correct color. So let's just do a for each loop. Squares dot for each. And remember inside of for each you put a function. I'm going to use an arrow function. And we would call this square. So in other words for each square. Square dot style dot background color equals color. And we want to call this function, because right now this function is being declared, but it's never being called. If I refresh this page, it's never going to happen. Nothing, it's never going to be called. We call this whenever we pick the correct color. So change colors, and we call it with the um, picked color. Either the clicked color or the picked color would work, because it'll only run whenever they're equal. So let's refresh and try it. Wrong, 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 wrong. Right, there we go, perfect. So it does set those colors. Wrong, right, there we go. So we did that. And then finally we're gonna pick a random color from the array. And again, this is something that we're gonna create a function for because we're gonna be calling it over and over again. Anytime you get new colors, anytime you reset, so let's get it right. Anytime you play again, you're going to be running that code to get one of the six colors. So that's a perfect use case for a function. One thing to note, and this is an important distinction between arrow functions and traditional functions, arrow functions must be declared earlier in the code than they are run. Traditional functions, you can declare them all at the bottom if you want. If we wanted to, we could come down here and, and declare a function const pick color equals function and we could we could do it that way and it would work just fine but because we're going to use an arrow function we have to declare it up here in the top and I'm going to go ahead and after I'm selecting elements I'm going to add a section for helper functions and const pick color will be in there pick color equals so there are two steps we need to do. We need to first get a random number between 0 and 5 inclusive. And then we need to return colors of that random number. So colors, whatever that random number is, return that element. So what this is going to do is it's going to return a color, return a string of those colors. So let's do the first part. In order to do this we're going to use math.random and a couple different math functions. We haven't talked about math yet. Math is a built-in object in JavaScript. It has all kinds of useful um, math functions on there. It has pi, it has random, it has rounding functions, got all kinds of cool stuff. So we're going to use math.random and what this will do is this will give us a random number between 0 and 1. It does not include 1 but it'll go up to 0.999 repeating. So in order to make this a number between 0 and 5, we have to simply multiply it by 5, by 6 rather. And just for, for poops and giggles, let's go ahead and console.log this. So const random equals that. So let's go ahead and console.log random whenever pick color is called. So let's call pick color right here and see what comes out. 5.6982 in a lot of decimals. So that doesn't help us right now because, and, it, and let's just refresh this over and over again, you can see that it's always going to be a number between 0 and 6. It does not include 6. I can't show that to you because, I, I mean, 
there's tons of decimals. The likelihood of six ever coming up, even if it did include six, is very, very small. However, just trust me, it, it doesn't. What we need to do now then is to round it down. Because right now, if we call colors of that, nothing will happen. It'll throw an error because you can't call index 4.918 on an array. It has to be four. It has to be an integer, not a float. So to do that, we're going to use another math function called floor. Math.floor. What that will do is that simply rounds down to the nearest integer. So we're getting a random number between 0 and 5 right here. Then we are rounding it down to an integer. Basically, it chops off the decimal is all that does. So right now, if I save and refresh, you'll see it's always going to be a decimal between 0 and 5, inclusive. So 0 and 5, and I can refresh this any, as many times as I want. It will always be between 0 and 5. And there's one thing I want to go ahead and future-proof a little bit. Right now, we are hard-coding the number of boxes we have. However, as you and I know, we want to have multiple modes. So if I do this, and it picks numbers 3, 4, or 5, we could run into a problem, obviously. So instead of actually hard-coding 6, we're going to do colors.length. Because right now, the length of colors is 6, so it's the same. But when we switch over to easy mode, we're only going to pick 3 colors, so the length of colors will be 3. That's just a little bit of future-proofing. And then instead of constant.logging random, we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. We need to return colors.random, or colors random. This will return in RGB, and we can, we can console.log that if we want to. Just so we can see what it's actually going to return. You see it's just returning these RGB values anything from here, randomly. And the last step is go ahead and get rid of this console.log. We don't need that. Instead of picking the first color each time, we're just going to call pick color. And that will get us a new picked color each time. If I refresh, you can see that this is changing each time, and you can see that it's different each time. Boom. But it still works. Our functionality still works. Boom. Boom. And that is number four sorted. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.